All right, so to start off, let's ask the key question. What is the key container data model? So you've probably heard of other more obvious data models like a key value pair or even MongoDB's key document store where you have a key and then that key corresponds to a document which is generally a JSON file which means um, you have many different types of blob type files. So what is a key container data model? Key container data model is as you can see here, the key corresponds to uh, a container and a container can be basically thought of as a relational database table. So essentially, once you get down to the container level in GridDB, now you are dealing with SQL and you have um, everything that, all the benefits that come from, you know, the 50 year old archetype, architecture of SQL, you have the benefits of those in the container level. So you have a fixed schema for faster search and um, you have ACID, um, which stands for uh, automicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. And you have all that while also benefiting from NoSQL on the, on the database level. So here's some more information about the key container data model. So it's set with a schema, and um, that means you have data consistency within the container. So you can't just change around the schema like you can with other NoSQL databases. Like for example, Mongo has no schema. You just create a new key value store, or sorry, a new key document store, save that, and it's good to go. But with that flexibility comes a cost and performance and um, data consistency. Um, and then also if you have a, a fixed schema, you have a faster data retrieval. And the other thing that comes with GridDB on the container level is you have TQL, which is a SQL-like query language for reading data from the containers. Um, GridDB also supports two different types of containers. There's a collection container for generic record, like let's say um, uh, a container of all of your different sensors out in the field or something. And the time series container is, actually has a time stamp as a row key. So let's say I have a thousand sensors out in the field. Um, each one will have its own container and each, con each, each container's row key will have a different time stamp. So here's an example of the key container data model versus, oh no, not versus anything. This is just how it looks, okay? So here on the left is a collection container. Um, so the row key here is um, anything. In this case, it's a, uh, a string, but it can be anything. It can be a string or a, or a integer or float or whatever. Um, and generally, you can be thought of as the record keeping kind of thing. So here on the left, we showcase it as um, hosting all of our sensors and stuff like that, metadata. And then on the right is the actual time series collection, or sorry, time series container. And um, this one has the row, the timestamp as a row key, and this one will most likely be all of your sensors. And you can see a little line chart of, you know, visualization of if you have all this time series data in your database, you can easily chart that on the line chart and um, you can see. All right, um, that wraps it up for the data model. We'll get much more into this as the course goes on. Just wanted to give you a sneak peek of how it is.